Panorama photography and drones are a union made in heaven. Having the point of view up in the sky opens the door to 360 degree images without any obstacles, giving a different perspective of reality. With the latest update, DJI has finally released the panorama mode on the Mavic 3. I know that many of you are panorama heroes, so I cannot wait to test it. At the end of this video, I will also try something very unusual. A panorama using the telephoto lens of the Mavic 3. I know, I know, I like to live dangerously. Some issues are specific to panorama and have to be considered when planning the shots. First of all, the stitching software needs several reference points to do the job properly. Therefore, it is better to avoid scene with a big portion taken by uniform elements, like water or the sky. As an example in this panorama, with a big portion of the scene being the sea and the sky, the software failed to stitch the image properly. The main thing to consider with sphere panoramas, and to a lesser extent with the 100 degree ones, is that the full sun will always be in the shot, as well as elements on the ground. Therefore the scene will have a huge dynamic range, and it will be extremely hard or impossible to expose correctly. I strongly suggest avoiding shooting sphere panorama with the full sun. It is much better to choose a day when the sun is covered by clouds, or to shoot just after sunset or before sunrise. It is obviously very important to expose for the highlights, making sure that the area around the sun is not overexposed, as nothing can be done to fix burn highlights. The shadows will be very dark, but in most cases it is possible to recover them. Another thing to avoid is the use of polarizing filters, as they react differently according to the angle of light. Therefore the sky will be uneven in the shots, composing the panorama, and severe banding can be caused. We access panorama mode via the video photo button above the shutter, on the right part of the menu through the icon at the bottom. The menu to the left will display four icons for different panel modes, sphere, 180 degrees, wide angle and vertical. Note that we can only access the panorama function when the drone is flying. We can now choose whether we want to keep each individual file for the photo taken either in RAW or in JPEG format. The GI Fly will automatically stitch a JPEG panorama as you can see from the line on top, labeled Output. There is no choice for the file format, only JPEG is available. By choosing to save the original photos, we can then process the images for more control and then stitch them together using other programs, as we will see later. We can then choose the exposure mode. If we click on the icon on the bottom right, we toggle from Auto Exposure to Manual labeled as Pro. In manual mode we can modify the values for shutter speed and ISO. If we choose the sphere mode the drone will shoot 26 photos in rapid succession, practically a 360 degree view over 3 rows of photos. 180 degrees mode shoots 21 photos. In the wide angle mode 9 photos are taken, 3 rows and 3 columns. Finally, vertical consists of a column of three photos. While shooting the images, the drone will rotate and tilt to optimize the amount of overlap between each shot. While shooting under the shutter icon, a numeric indicator will show the progression of the process in percentage. Note that after having shot all photos, it will be still busy for a few more seconds as the app is stitching the automatic JPEG panorama. Immediately after shooting the panorama, 
DJI Fly App stitches the image in a JPEG file, available directly on the app for posting immediately on social media. In the case of a sphere panorama, the, the file can be shared on Facebook as an interactive 360 degree image. The viewer will be able to move around the photo. The file will be also saved on the memory disk. There will be two different folders, one named Panorama, containing the individual file of each shot, if this option was chosen, while another folder named 100 Media will contain the auto-generated files. The vertical mode is a single row of three photos, suitable for tall subjects like buildings or mountains. Compared to previous model of the Mavic line, this file contains an astonishing amount of info in the shadows and responds extremely well to post-processing. In this case, I've pushed the shadows much more than I would normally do to show how much can be recovered. The wide angle mode consists of three vertical rows of three images each. One of the big advantages of panorama photo is the huge amount of resolution. The detail is excellent even at extreme zoom level, which makes them particularly suitable for very large prints. The 180 degree mode is made by three rows of seven photos. To accommodate such a wide view on two dimensions, there is obviously some distortion, although in my opinion much less than in previous models. The distortion in this sort of images is not necessarily a bad thing, as it creates a slightly unexpected and surreal look, leaving room for creativity. The mode Sphere attempts a 360 degree view of a scene in a two dimensional space. There is obviously more distortion. The row at the top is not made by the original photos, as the camera cannot reach that high, but it is an attempt to recreate part of the sky. Generally, I prefer to get rid of it in post processing. The stitching in some cases is not perfect. As you can see here, there is a strong color banding in the sky at the stitching points. This is probably due to the fact that the original photos taken with the main lens have a very strong vignette. But in most cases, it's quite easy to get rid of the banding during post processing. Sphere mode is meant mostly to be seen as an interactive image on social media or as a tiny planet. But the two-dimensional distorted projection gives at times very creative and oniric results. I was surprised by the quality of the auto-generated JPEG file, but for serious panorama heroes like most of you, the way to go is to save each individual photo as a raw file and then stitch them together using a third-party program. The resolution is sensational at any zoom level. Using this method is also much easier to get rid of color banding in the sky. The amount of detail that can be recovered in the shadows is simply astonishing. The 4 3rd sensor of the Mavic 3 pays huge dividends in thermodynamic range. I have post-processed the files with On One Photo Road, the program that I've been using recently for organizing videos and photo and editing still images. It has a module for panorama that works really well in general, but there is not yet a profile for the lens of the Mavic 3. So, for stitching the panels, I have used PTI. You will find info about On One Photo Row in the description below, together with a discount coupon code.
The quality of the images of the telephoto lens of the Mavic 3 has recently been improved by the latest firmware update. Sadly, using this lens, the files cannot be saved in RAW format, and there is no manual exposure. Two huge limitations. But I decided to try a few panorama using this lens, obviously taking the shots manually, making sure to have enough overlap between two shots. The result is not bad, with a very different perspective of parallax, due to the very long lens. Since manual exposure is not available, it is better to avoid scenes with too much latitude in luminosity, like sunset with both natural and electric light, or shots against the sun. Let me know in a comment below if you're interested in a specific video about how to shoot a panorama with a telephoto lens, or how to shoot a manual HDR panorama. Click on this link to watch my in-depth video about photography with the Mavic 3. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting.